What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video we're going to go over doing a cool animation using Flare and it's mainly going to be used for this first page once a user logs in. So you'll, you can see the animation by clicking back to the page. You'll see the clouds come in from the side and the sun pops up. And this is essentially supposed to look kind of like a beach here where this is the water and this is the sand but maybe that needs a little bit more refining. Either way we're going to go over this animation right now. All right, so if you've been following along, the first thing you'll notice is if you sign into the app without actually having any trips, or if you delete all the trips on your account, you'll see this error here. So the first area of issue is this calculator widget here, which is being called within this future builder. Um, so we first need to, the problem is we don't have any data. The snapshot has no data and that's what we're trying. The data in this is null essentially, so that's basically what this error is here. So we can check real quick if the snapshot data equals null. Uh, and then if it does, that's when we would display uh, the welcome page. If not, we'll do we'll display what we have here. This actually might not make the error entirely go away, but you'll see now we have a different error. So as you can see right now, we have this one column with essentially three widgets in it. The one being the future builder for that uh, that card up at the top. And then we have our add, and then we have that list of all the trips. So instead, let's create a new function here that is going to give us the app in its state that it would look like, uh, bef like if we had a trip. So it'll actually be easier to do this if we just add a trip so we can see what we're doing. And now we're on this main page. So really we want all of this again to be inside this future, this future builder. So we're going to create a new function here and that's going to happen in this else block that we just created and this we can call uh, the show home page uh, with trips I suppose right so with all right so we're also going to pass the snapshot data into this new function because we are going to create this calculator widget in this new function and we're going to need the snapshot data for that which is actually in the form of a trip so we can copy this line here and just return the new function there so we actually do need to we do need to create that so let's go ahead down to the bottom of this file and create that new function uh, so this is going to return a widget and right quick let's paste what we had for that calculator widget and then just copy the name of this uh, the snapshot data is actually going to be a trip so we can do of type trip and and now within this we're going to just return essentially a column that contains this calculator widget and the add and the list view so uh, We'll just do a column here and then and then the first element is going to be this calculator widget and for the trip it's going to now take in the trip that we're passing into this function which again is that snapshot data because that's what we put up here so we we are kind of building this backwards we called the function before we built it but that's what's going on there um, uh, put a semicolon there quick and then now we can take that add mob add which is actually right here and we can take also the expanded widget and just copy all of this um, and remove we can just remove that comment uh, and then paste all of that down here so now if we save this we're actually getting a blank screen okay so since we removed those other those other elements below, we actually can simplify this quite a bit. So we don't need the column anymore. So let's actually remove that. Um, and then we can just remove these two areas there. Uh, now we'll have a future builder inside a container. So we do need to put that child element here. And then format that up. And now if you save it, you'll see the, the app looks exactly as it did. Um, the next thing, you'll see some of these gray underlines here. Uh, that's because we're not returning anything within this part of the if statement. So this is where we're going to return that new, um, 
<clears throat> that new page, that new looking page. So let's also, similar to how we are doing it right here, uh, this one we're not gonna have any data to pass through, so we're just gonna call the show page, uh, and we're gonna we're gonna create it as a new function. So it'll just be show. Uh, I guess it could just be show new page, show new trip page. I don't know. We can name that whatever we want. But now we can create that widget uh, just below that one we just created, and. So this one we can just for now, we'll return a column. And then inside that column, we can just have some text. All right, so if you save that, nothing actually changes. But if we go into this uh, trip here and delete it, we'll be back to that main page, which before was showing an error. And now it just has that text there. So that's good progress in that. And now we can build up this widget to actually have that, that beach looking layout and a button that will link to uh, creating an actual new trip. All right, so when this is complete, it is gonna be basically three rows here and then that one button with text. So it's pretty simple. And then this whole animation up at the top is going to be done uh, separately with Flare. So let's get everything but the animation done first. Uh, so within this here, we go back into the, back into the other app, the app that we're working on. Actually, I'll just go ahead and code out. I'm just gonna code, I'm just gonna write the code for that layout because it's not really that complex and then I'll just quickly go over it. All right, so here is that uh, new show new trip page. Uh, we, have, we have to create a new instance of a trip uh, and this is actually kind of a messy way to do that but we're gonna leave that for now. Uh, that's just the way it's been set up so the reason we need the new trip is because when we click this button, it passes that new trip over to here. Uh, it's the same thing that we're doing with this button here, but it is down in the middle now, which is nice. Uh, you can see real quick, we have one container, which is just this blue color. I'm using a custom color directly in the code right here now, but later we are gonna move that to be actually uh, part of the theme. Um, you'll see the height here is 30% of the view height, so that's going to be this blue box. Then the second container, this darker blue box, which will supposed to be like the ocean, uh, that has the actual text in it. Uh, so it's a simple column in there with the text and then the, the button as well. And maybe we do 50 on each end, so that's spaced out. Uh, the button is pretty simple, just link us to a new trip, that's why we we also need to import this new trip uh, location view, which is gonna be that first page right here. Finally, we use expanded on this third widget, so that's just gonna fill up the, the remaining space with, uh, with this color background. Uh, notice the width is set on all of these as well, and the width is gonna be the screen width. Uh, but yeah, that is basically all you'll need to do for that. Uh, for now, we're just gonna leave this top bar the color that it is. Uh, in another video, we'll do more in-depth details about uh, colors in the app, but basically this is all set. The only thing we need to do is add that animation here. So that animation is actually gonna be created with Flare. And this is kind of a really powerful tool you can use with your Flutter app to make these animations. Uh, again, let me show you on the completed version of the app. It will look like this. So when you when the page loads, you'll see the clouds come in from the side and the sun <clears throat> up from the bottom. Uh, this, so this is like relatively simple, but still looks very cool. And I think just by seeing how this is done, you can use it in multiple ways in your app. All right, so Flare is, uh, is owned by Rive. If you go to rive.app, uh, you'll be able to create an account. Once you have your account created, you can see I already have the animation here built, but I'll, I'll just build it from scratch so you can see how it's done. Uh, if we go to a new, we can do a new file here, uh, and it'll be public. If you want to pay for it to be private, you can sign up and do that. Uh, I'll just leave it public, no big deal. Um, then you'll have your artboard here. So the way that these animations work is they're using vector graphics. So if you're in, for instance, Adobe XD and you design an element, you can export that element as an SVG. And an SVG, that type, that file type actually just stands for a scalable vector graphic. So those are graphic, uh, or those would be vector uh, images. So 
I'm going to import these two that I already did export, and it's the sun and the cloud. Uh, and then you can just drag them right onto your artboard here. Um, now, you can also just create stuff directly in here using uh, using this this element. You can create shapes and and really draw whatever you want within this. I think it's easier to create the SVG and then export them, but uh, either way, either way would work. Uh, the cloud is importing kind of small, so I think we'll increase the scale of that by two on both ends. Uh, and then this cloud over here, we can put. Uh, We'll scale this one by two as well. Maybe we make this one actually, this top cloud scale by 2.3, make it a little bit bigger. But so yeah, once you lay out the board, however you want it. So this, imagine that this whole thing will be the image that we're gonna export. All right, so now that we have this laid out how we want it, we can go over to this animate tab and this is going to actually let us move these around across a timeline. So you can see right now the time is set to 10 seconds. Let's actually change that to two seconds because we don't want the animation to be that long. Then also over here, you'll notice we have this untitled uh, animation. We're going to rename this to really anything you want, but this is what we're actually gonna call within the app to run the animation. So uh, we can call it a do animation. So now with this do animation, we can actually start to manipulate these objects here. Let's see, so we wanna actually make sure we're on the highest level of the element, so the sun right here. And you'll see when we're in the animate, when we're in this animate tab here, we get these diamonds next to everything when something's selected. And these mean, these let us set like a keyframe. So basically, Basically the way the picture looks right now is how we want it to look at the end of the two seconds. So scroll this timeline all the way to the end of the two seconds and while the sun is still selected here, just uh, tick the Y, um, lock in that keyframe there. Now we can go all the way back to the beginning and we can change this Y value to be um, much higher actually because the way this artboard works, the zero, zero is up in the top left corner. So we're going to need this to be increased probably to about 750. Uh, and you see that's almost off the page. If you go over this more, you get it completely off the page. Once that is completely off the page, we can check that box here and we'll see that the, that we also have that keyframe there. So if you hit play now, you'll see that the sun appears to rise up out of the screen. Now we could do the same thing with the clouds. So this first cloud, uh, again, we're at the end here of the two seconds. This time we're gonna lock the X in and then we can bring the timeline back to the beginning. And now we are going to move this X. Uh, this one we're going to move down. So we're probably gonna have to go negative here. Uh, maybe negative 50. No, probably negative, maybe 200 then. Uh, and just keep going until it's, off the page, uh, and then that gets locked in as well. Uh, if you hit this play again, you can see those both uh, come in nicely. And then finally, this third cloud, uh, if we select that, again, lock the X on it because we want to scroll in from the right this time. Uh, so this one we are going to be increasing, uh, I believe, up. So this is probably gonna go to like 900, uh, nope, more, maybe a thousand and a little bit more good and then that looks good so now if we hit the play button you'll see it is animating how we would want it how we would expect it uh, i guess things are taking a bit longer to save we keep getting this warning here but not to worry uh change the name of this to be uh whatever you would like to call it so i'll call this sun clouds and and then this is what we were gonna actually export. So that'd be the name of your file. To export it is very simple. You just hit this export button and export and just export it as the binary and then click export. It'll go to your downloads folder, which is right over there. So that's good. All right, so back in Android Studio, we're going to open up the pubspec.yaml and we're gonna actually add a new uh, package here. And this package is gonna let us use the Flare animations in our Flutter project. So that package is called uh, Flare Flutter, and I'm going to be using version 203. 
Uh, another thing we're going to need to do is add the assets folder, which I have not set up yet. You may have. You can see down here in some of the comments, uh, it is commented out. So I'm just going to uncomment that for the assets. And then I'm going to just add it as a new folder called assets, actually. Uh, so to do a full folder, you can just do uh, do do it like this with the trailing slash. Uh, if you wanted, you could add each image individually or each asset individually, but I find this to be easier. Uh, so now we can add that actual folder, do it on the highest level of the of the um, project there and add a directory. And this will just be called assets. And then within this, we can actually right click and reveal in finder. And then if we dig into that, we can drop this file that we just exported that FLR file. And now we will be set in our app for that. Uh, because we changed the pubspec.yaml file, we do need to run pub get. So go ahead and run that. Uh, and then to get this animated is actually not too much more work. Uh, you'll see we're still in the old version of the app over here. So let's get back into the version that we've been working on. All right, so we're back in the app that we were developing now. And the only thing we need to add is just that animation up here. So firstly, we're gonna import that new package that we just, uh, that we just got with that flare actor. Flare Actor is actually what we're going to be using. It's from the Flutter or the Flare Flutter package. Flare Actor lets us actually just add that Flare file as a widget itself, and it'll run that animation. So let's find actually down at the very bottom here. We can find this container and where we have that first element. Uh, we can we're going to actually add a child to it now, so it hasn't had one this whole time and we're going to use the flare actor widget and then this takes a few parameters uh, the first one being that actual file so that's in our assets folder and it's called uh, sun clouds and then that's a dot flr file uh, the next thing it takes is the alignment um, uh, which for this we're just going to do center because we already we already set it up to be basically centered for in, in flare itself uh, then the fit here uh, we're going to actually have it fit the width because we want those clouds coming exactly from the edge of the screen here uh, but there's a few different fit options you could use uh, we'll do box fit and then fit width uh, that should be good and then the last one we need is the animation, which if you remember, we named this animation do animation. Whatever you ended up calling this is what you're is what you're gonna enter right here. So do animation. Uh, and then if you save this, it looks like it actually crashed, so just rerun it. Uh, all right, yes, and once that uh, comes back up, you'll see if you rerun the app you'll see that animation runs when the page loads. If you click to another page and then click back to the home page, the animation will run again. And you can change a lot of stuff with this. I mean, that time is two seconds. You can speed it up, slow it down. You can have the animation have multiple keyframes. You could have the sun come up and then down a little bit and it'll have like a bounce effect. Uh, so this is actually a very simple, animation right now it could become much more complex uh but yeah that's going to be it for this video hope you enjoyed you'll notice a lot of the other styling pieces are not quite matching the example version and that'll all be covered in future videos if there's something that you want specifically let me know down in the comments and i'll try to include that all right if you haven't already please consider subscribing ciao for now